we are live. This is a spoiler free video. Review of Two and a Half Men. Two and a Half Men show review. Or Two and a Half Men, Three Bitches, and a Psycho. As I believe either Conchata Farrell or Holland Taylor puts it. Yes, this is a slightly different background because this couch is the only thing that I can sit on other than my ass that doesn't make my back hurt. So yeah, you get in a view of the couch, the treadmill, and I don't know if you can hear it, but it is raining relatively intensely outside. So it's possible that I may at some point need to just unplug stuff, which shouldn't be too, it at, at most should affect the lighting. And I may have to do a video I may have to talk faster from unplugging the, the laptops. Anyway, we are getting right into the plot. Charlie Harper loves his life. He makes an easy living off writing jingles for various products. He has a lot of casual sex with a lot of women letting the show display lots of ditzy young women. He drinks a lot and has done a lot of drugs. Just trying to figure out. Yeah, I think that'll be. He lives in a beachfront house in Malibu. He has everything he wants. But one night, his brother Alan, a neurotic wreck of a man, shows up, his wife having kicked him out of their home. They're probably going to get a divorce, and that leaves Alan with no place else to live. Charlie reluctantly agrees to let him stay, mostly because he likes his kid, 10-year-old Jake, and he figures their package deal. He hasn't been part of his nephew's life for years, but he does now find him charming, which is not going to last. And he also likes being able to influence the kid, introducing him to gambling, women, etc., and Alan does worry that his brother will be a bad influence and the two butt heads over it. And that's where a lot of the show is about. Just influencing Jake in the... Yeah. Now, moving on. On plot. I have not watched and have no intention of watching, much less making excuses for, The Big Bang Theory. In general, I believe this is the only Chuck Lorre show that I've watched, and I, no, nothing, every single thing that I've heard about the other ones makes me pretty confident that this is the only one I'm ever going to want to watch. Now, others have already pointed out that the show being called Two and a Half Men stopped making sense once Jake was no longer half a man, but a grown man. As far as I can tell, in German they called the show My Cool Uncle Charlie, which really would have made more sense, well, although he doesn't always think he's so cool. And alternatively, you can say that Charlie or Walden, you know, by which point Jake is... Let's see, yeah, I guess I shouldn't... Yeah, anyway. Maybe Charlie or Walden is not mature enough to be called a man, and I believe Chuck Lorre said somewhere that he thinks of it as, you know, Charlie isn't a grown man. I quite like the various jingles on this show, considering them it's a wonder that the theme song itself is as bad as it is. Now, the series creator Chuck Lorre is also an accomplished jingle writer, just like the show's main star, he actually co-wrote the theme song for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when he worked in the music department of the animated series. Now, the, there's, a, there's a DVD special feature on the DVD of season four where Chuck Lowry and I forget the other guy's name, say we're the creators of Two and a Half Men and we're sorry, which is very drawfy of them. And they they say all the time working on the show, they would, you know, yeah, they would, they would say, we like this line of dialogue, 
so how can we get it on TV on TV on CBS at nine? And of course, have to. I've, I'm on record as loving these shows that sneak past, sneak really offensive stuff past the censors. Now, and they also say the original concept of the show was how does what he does impact on this kid, and how does the kid impact on him? And the let's see both Charlie Allen and Jake their their actors sound very very different from their characters on commentary tracks and let's see and they're good on commentary tracks and in gag reels now just like the Mary Mary the children hello hello I laugh hard at and like almost love almost all of the jokes on on this I would say love except for the the homophobic transphobic and others that bother me as a progressive being a progressive and I realize about all of these as progressive I probably shouldn't like the show at all but you know what what's the term guilty pleasure you know it's just yeah I I hate censorship I think censorship is one of the worst things. The The moment that you tell someone you shouldn't be doing that or saying that, I think you need an extremely good argument for why you're saying that. And I've always... I'm not going to make this about me. I've, there are countless examples throughout history, throughout human history, where people have been told that they were saying or doing something that they shouldn't be doing and where we later realize it was we shouldn't have been telling them that we should have looked at well why are they saying or doing this thing you know are are these people complaining or are they pointing out something that needs to change if you don't think a, a certain thing needs to change then hearing other people say that it needs to change thousands of times, it's just going to make you frustrated and eventually you're going to say, stop saying that. But the reason they're saying it thousands of times is because they need it to change. And if they don't say it, if they don't express that it needs to change, it'll never get changed. Now, I thought, and it's only recently that I watched this entire show. I am no longer going to say, I, I don't know exactly when, at least the last, yeah, I'm just, maybe the last two seasons, I'm just, I think I'm safe if I say the last two seasons I only recently watched, I got the entire series on, I, I would hold up like the season set, but again, back issues. The, the, and I realize now that I, could just take the DVDs out, but I can't. The way the camera is set up right now, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to picture it in your mind. I got the entire all all twelve seasons as a I want to say Christmas present, but again, you know, I've it takes me almost a month to get through a season because I only watch one episode per day, so it's been almost a year. And no, that doesn't actually, that only tells me how far back, at, at least, you know, I've, I've owned it for a year, but it might be even further back, because I might have been doing a different show when I got the, anyway. The point is, until recently, until, yeah, until I watched every single episode, I thought that I would prefer Mayor of the Children to this show. In part because I watched that when I was younger, and there's some nostalgia. And I, I will still say, I, I don't think that this... This isn't trying to be more of a live-action cartoon than that show. And I I forget who said... I think it was an IMDb review where I saw someone pointed out that once... I forget the actor's name, but the, you know... And now, I, now I'm blanking on his... His last name is Darcy. Once he joins the show, 
it becomes yeah again just to quote that review it became one of the best live action cartoon shows ever and yeah and this show isn't trying to outdo that at all and if if that's what you want then you know you're going to want that show instead of this one but on the whole quality wise this is my favorite sitcom my favorite comedy show of all time you know, Married with Children had better writing in the first three seasons and then became a live-action cartoon in the later seasons, starting around season four. You know, this has amazing writing all the way through, even as it does become, you know, as it, as it gets more... Yeah, the, the, at the end, what I, what I settled on was the phrasing that the characters engage in increasingly unacceptable behavior. The further along in the show you get, the the more of that. But yeah, the the you know, married with children. The further along you get, the bigger, the more of a live action cartoon it is. And yeah, the the writing. I don't know if it was a steady decline. Or it was just that, yeah, after the first three seasons, it just wasn't as good. And it and it, had, it had its ups and downs. This, I would say, got funnier the, the longer it was on. I understand people who, you know, if you think that it should have ended way before it did, you know, you're, you're free to have that opinion. I disagree. I don't think it should necessarily have lasted longer than it did. But... I don't really think, I mean, if they had done another season or just a few more episodes, I don't think it would have meant that the show would suddenly no longer be any good, but it probably, I mean, eventually you're going to end up just, <sighs> nothing lasts forever, basically. But yeah, the, the you know, Married with Children, if you kept watching after the first three seasons, it was because you accepted that the show was, you know, you, you could live with the show no longer being quite as good and or you really loved the, the live action cartoon aspect, but with this show just, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess it's not necessarily that the writing got better or got worse, again, in my opinion, but the longer it was on, the, the further they could go with it, the, the less, you know, the, the further they were able to push what the censors would, would let them, and yeah. So, let's see. I mean, this, this show never really, I mean, there are occasional live action cartoon aspects, but it never became a live action yeah. Now, and there are also, and this this is definitely not a constant, but in some of the later seasons, it's not that the further along, the more it got, but in some of the later seasons, it's a lot more crass and crude with even, I mean, there's, there's some gross out comedy from the very start of the show through the very end. But there are a couple of very, like, yeah, genuinely extreme gags. And even a couple of, like, physical, you know. And I, I personally don't. I think that was, I think they went too far with that. But they really didn't do it very much. I worried when, when it started that it was going to keep going, but... There really aren't very many. I think I can count on one hand just even the amount of gags where I think that they did go too far. Okay, maybe that's going too far. I can count on one hand the episodes where they, but in some of those episodes there are more gags than fingers on a hand. Now, let's see. Yeah, so, I wrote down from every single season ep examples of increasingly unacceptable behavior. 
Now, I'm not going to read aloud all of these. And some would say that I should have decided which I was going to read aloud at all before hitting record on the camera, but here we are. Now... Yeah, in... Yeah, see, the thing, some of these actually you, you should you should see for yourself instead of yeah I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try not to have a lot of dead air here as I read these in my head instead of out loud let's Yeah, I suppose I could say there are some cases of revenge and where and, and of people not being able to forgive something that happened a really long time ago. Now Yeah, there's one episode where Charlie describes some some behavior that he indulged in, and you know, I guess it would be the '80s for for him as well, due to his age. Anyway, and Alan points out we no longer live in a Porky's movie, which it really is something that sounded like it belonged in a Porky's movie. Yeah. 80s R-rated comedies were really messed up. Not that there weren't also some... I haven't watched that many of the more recent ones, you know, American Pie and onwards. But American Pie does definitely also have some really screwed up behavior. Now... And framing of that behavior. Let's see... At one point, Charlie admits to drinking when babysitting Jake. You know, Al Alan asks, You drink when you're babysitting my son? Not at first, but he wears me down. And... Let's see... Sometimes people will form and remain in a rela relationship, including a romantic relationship, for unethical reasons. And... Let's see. People taking advantage of each other. Charlie and others not caring when people even close to him clearly have problems that need to be addressed. Now. And, yeah, there are various perversions. Let's see. Yeah. 
Yeah, I should. Let's see. I'm going to skip through these since I've decided I'm not going to read them aloud. So, let's see. And, let's see. Yes, now, some of the people making the show applied the philosophy that the comedy should arise from the characters, not from them being in ridiculous situations. And I'd say they largely succeeded. There are a couple of exceptions. And let's see. But yeah, I would I would definitely say that overall this is a better show than Married with Children. Now the show is mostly filmed on interior sets, but every so often it will go outside and or on location. And these are always impeccably filmed and edited and used incredibly well. I can only really draw a comparison to the ones on British sitcoms such as Alolo and, you know, Blackadder, especially in the first season of Blackadder, where they're just, they're not good. It's, it's too dark. Sometimes you have trouble making out what you're looking at. They do not know when to and when not to use the zoom button. Just, and, and with this one, I mean, I guess... Maybe they just straight up got, you know, for those, maybe they hired people who work making movies because it really is, I, honestly, I, do, I don't know. I just, I could imagine that people who are trained on sitcoms and people who are trained on a lot of outside shooting kind of stuff. And, you know... I realize there there are other sitcoms that will sometimes go like outside, but in those, from what I've seen, it tends to just look like they're still on a set more or less. And for some of them, honestly, they might be. But this actually has like yeah, Hollywood level camera work and editing for for some of these outside sequences. And again, there aren't. There aren't a ton of them, but the ones there are, yeah. Now, let's see. There are, the show features various discount cheapo versions of products, and these are genuinely terrible in quality and may cause more problems than they solve, and these include some medical products, and I, th I think they tend to be made up on the show, and I could imagine, I mean... It's probably one of those things where if, if there is, like, a cheap brand and you make fun of it on a sitcom, they might, like, try to sue you or something where, you know, if you if you say something negative about, like, a huge brand, I mean, you know, they can they can cry into their millions of dollars. So it's it's not quite as big of a, of a deal. I could imagine. But again, I don't know for sure. Now, moving on to... Sex and gender. Now, a lot of what I would say in this section, I said in my video, in my review on Married with Children. So, you know, I always appreciate if you if you've watched that. I, th I think, I think I, that video is is one of my one of my better. And uh, yeah. Now, let's see. I ended up. Yeah, I think I eventually just, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, con yeah, eventually I stopped noting down any, every time it, it happened, but in, I mean, overall, it's not that many, but in some episodes over the course of the series, the, you know, when, when Charlie and Alan are, in the same place such as in a store and later it's with you know if, if Walden is you know or a doctor's office and you know the men are not with women people will mistake them for being gay partners and let's see and there are a bunch of jokes about how some people will think one of one or more of them are gay or overly feminine or the like. 
and they might discuss which is gayer than the other. You know, there, there's a lot of the the yeah the 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 idea of being gay, especially being a gay man, is very frequently like that's something that they get they get defensive if someone mistakes them for that. And let's see. I think this is the same this DVD special feature that I mentioned before. So it's Chuck Lorre and the other creator. Yeah, one of, one of them says, We acknowledge the reality that everyone is a sexual being, being. We made a show where everybody has a sex life. Even their mother does, the maid does, the ex-wife does. Now, moving on to next section. Joke types. Now, two characters will say something. One of them will say to the other, and the other may be confused or otherwise react. That more or less makes sense in the current situation. And then later, one of those characters will repeat or paraphrase of the like to someone who doesn't know the other situation, and thus they don't understand what's being said, and it'll sound just ridiculous to them. You know, one, one example is Alan at one point, you know, he talks to Charlie and he refers to masturbation as yank it like a monkey, monkey in a mango tree. And later, Charlie, when talking to his girlfriend, you know, they, they haven't had sex yet. And, you know, he, he just says to her, I can't go back to the mango tree. And that's, you know, that sounds ridiculous to her, but, you know, the, and, and it's, yeah, it's hilarious because the, the, we know what is, is meant by that. And it's, it's a pretty, you know, yank it like a mon monkey in a mango tree. That, that puts an image in your head, you know, starting to see pictures, ain't you? And, uh, yeah, they, they, you know, that's, that's in some ways much funnier if he had said, you know, just, you know, I would, I would jack off or something. Now, and similar char characters will say something out loud only to find out they didn't realize how bad it would sound. And the show will find many different ways, sometimes dozens of ways, for characters to say the same thing across dozens of separate episodes. Alan and Charlie will argue about rent. Alan doesn't pay any. Alan doesn't... Uh, Alan doesn't think he should pay, have to pay since they are brothers, and he thinks he should have a say in the house since he lives there and they are brothers, while Charlie thinks that he should pay rent, or even better, just leave. And certainly he doesn't get a say without paying rent. Evelyn will argue that she's the victim, while her sons and others who know her will argue that she's the victimizer. Jake will argue that it's not his fault he's doing poorly in class, and not realize others are calling him stupid, even thanking, you know, that there's a... Um, yeah, there's, there's a... An episode where Jake says something that makes Charlie, that annoys Charlie, and Charlie says, "Alan, hit your, you know, yeah, hit hit your son in the head for me," and Alan will respond, "Do you really think we should risk even more brain damage?" And Jake will say, "Thanks for sticking up for me, Dad," not realizing he, that that he was just insulted by his own father. While Alan and Charlie, as well as others who know him, will say that it is his fault and that he's stupid, impossible to control, and that it's probably because of lead paint being dropped on his head as a baby and the like. Jokes about bad parenting. And let's see. How happy a parent, even someone who genuinely cares about being a good parent, is to be free of having to parent their kid or kids at least for a little while even for a very short while they'll be incredibly relieved alan and judith among others will put their own happiness before jake's safety irresponsible behavior sometimes from people who should know much better 
and often with no consequences, which of course frustrates people like Alan who try to be a better person and try to not indulge in bad behavior. Now, let's see. I realize that my glasses are reflecting the screen. I'm trying to find a good angle. But at the same time, I also have to make sure to sit in a way that isn't uncomfortable for my neck. I think, yeah, maybe something like that. Now, Charlie will state that he is happy with his life, or claim that he is when he obviously isn't, and that changes between episodes. Others will mock his lifestyle and or show jealousy of it. Alan is terrible at lying to people. He will ramble details ceaselessly, and Walt and Schmidt is sometimes the same way. So when he's trying to lie to get himself out of a bad situation, and, you know, yeah, Alan needs Charlie's help lying. Charlie will often refuse to help him lie, but not actually give away that he is lying, you know, because it's, it's funnier to watch Alan continue to lie poorly. The, let's see... And, yeah, for example, if Alan doesn't want to be with another person at a certain time, he may s say, I have plans with Charlie, and then ask Charlie to say what it was they were going to do, so, to, as to back up what he, and to help him lie because he's so bad, only for Charlie to say, honestly, I don't really remember, what was it we were going to do, to just, yeah. The women Charlie is with will be stupid drunk, easy to get into bed and the like, which Charlie is sometimes happy with, sometimes frustrated, unhappy, or bored with. Alan will be claimed to be gay or at least overly effeminate, sometimes to his face, sometimes he'll argue, sometimes he doesn't care. Let's see. Sometimes he Sometimes he himself brings it up, or even monologues out loud to himself about it, even when nobody else brought it up. And, let's see... Yeah, and, and with Walden... You know, he seems to genuinely think at times that he is gay, and that he and Walden are a couple, or at least in love with each other, and... Just, you know, and, and when Walden says we're, we're not, he'll, he'll be, you know, frustrated or, or sullen or he'll, you know, that way that if, if like, if you're with a girl, I've never done this, but just, just to be absolutely, you know, I, I guess I should make a blanket, I've never done anything they do on this show kind of thing, just so you don't think I'm some perv, but the... There's that thing where a guy will be with a girl and then, like, maybe a friend of his or a potential other girlfriend or an ex or something will say, are you two together? And he'll say, no, she's just a friend and she'll be, you know, genuinely hurt by that. And that's sometime, sometimes how Alan reacts. When, when Walden says, yeah. Which doesn't mean that he doesn't still go for women. They'll joke about Alan's masturbation and childhood bedwetting. Charlie will talk about being genuinely scared of Berta because of how strong and willing to use force she is. Realizing, you know, if you, if you haven't watched the show and you've only watched up to this point in the video, I haven't mentioned Berta. Berta's the housekeeper. I'll mention more about her later. And I also didn't mention Evelyn, who Evelyn is. Evelyn's the mother, the, the mother of the brothers. Even though she may not always admit to that. Evelyn will talk about how primitive Jake is. One or both of the brothers will show up at her house unannounced and she will look at them through the camera and she probably has a man or several in the, or a woman or more of more than one of those up there that she's having sex with. The family and many others don't want to acknowledge Alan as a real doctor, being a, he's a chiropractor, and he and they won't want him to treat them. 
Evelyn will focus on how something affects her when it actually affects the members of her family, especially one or both of her sons far more. And it and it's really something that's happening to them, not her. I, I believe in the in the pilot, she tries to make the divorce about her. You know, she doesn't focus on how miserable Alan is and how unhappy. You know, he's he's like my life is falling apart, and she's like. I can't believe people are going to say about me that my son got a divorce. And and I should also make a blanket. I love almost every single character on this show and find their their behavior largely reprehensible. Now, there are a couple of characters that I, that I'm not that fond of. But yeah, I will get to that. And she will even have to be continually reminded that it's hurting someone else more than her. Excuse me. There are many, many jokes about drugs, drinking, sex, and combinations of them. And now the first part of the course of the show in increasing amounts. Jokes about smoking pot with several main characters. You know. Let's see. Yeah, with several... Yeah, see, these notes are from voice typing, and I don't always remember to proofread. I'm not entirely sure about them. Anyway, yeah, several characters smoke pot and will... Uh, do we ever really see it? We'll see. We'll see bongs. I'm not entirely sure. I think maybe a few times we'll actually see someone do a hit off of a bong or, or the like. But mostly it's just we'll, we'll see that there is a bong or it'll be mentioned or such. Now, as well as jokes about Viagra with both brothers and some others using, including someone having to be around someone they can't have sex with, including the other brother, while it's in effect. Joe frequently jokes that he hopes their mother dies, even joking that maybe he and or Alan would kill her, and the reason they don't is the jail time, not that they would feel bad. Child will joke about how he wants Alan to leave his house. Both brothers will joke that Evelyn is literally the devil. A number of jokes about Alan dying, either from suicide or Charlie killing him or aiding in his suicide. No one caring, some offering to help or at least in covering up or paying for a hitman or putting Charlie in touch with a hitman. Jokes about Charlie's ex-girlfriends and the sum about the, the current husbands or boyfriends about of his girlfriends tr sorry trying to murder him because he dumped them children threaten Jake with violence even murder sometimes to his face sometimes to others he may apologize saying he wouldn't really do that and Jake will reply he couldn't really do that Jake will point out how Charlie insults others in a personal way without them insulting him first. First, Alan will be effeminate, sometimes close to Charlie, who finds it extremely uncomfortable. Alan will put his own enjoyment, especially sex, over the need of someone to watch Jake. Sometimes even forgetting, like, is the lighting... I don't think... It looks... No, I think it's still... Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's, really, it's still just my, my face that's... Yep, yeah, it's my face that's being red compared to my, my hand. The... the Yeah. There, there are a couple of times where he literally... Like, he's, he's headed out on a date and Charlie will be like, Who's watching Jake? And Alan will be like, Who's Jake? Or, Oh, right, Jake. And, yeah. Sometimes the show will smash cut from someone threatening someone, like hitting them, or warning about something or the like. There's, yeah, I, I believe, you know, Charlie's really angry at, at Alan, and Alan says, bite me, and smash cut, I can't believe you bit me. You know, yeah, smash cut to after it has happened. And a lot of the, like... <laughs> Sometimes someone will hit someone else and it'll be off screen and we'll just we'll hear the impact and someone will you know and, and you'll hear the person like yell out in pain.
but you won't actually see it, which I hadn't really thought about, but that's probably a sensor thing. Now, but it is also, you know, especially on something like a sitcom, effectively imitating violence in something like that, where you can't cut to, can't necessarily cut to an angle, yeah. But there is also some great on-screen violence, and there, you know, the people who fall off a, a bed directly onto the, the the floor, or like someone will be holding someone in a sexual way, and then someone will walk in and catch them, and they'll just you know, yeah, as almost as if to almost as if figuring that if they drop them now, the person won't realize that they were holding them. And yeah, just drop their partner on the floor. So yeah, you know, with, without necessarily showing that they got really hurt. So some, you know, the the yeah, like that, closer to a live action sitcom. And in some of the later seasons, Charlie just can't stop admitting to potential one night stands how bad things are instead of just picking them up, which in in earlier episodes, you know, that used to be the, the thing he would do, you know, oh, it's it's Saturday night, better go pick up a one night stand. And let's see. Not as much early on in the show, but later in the show. Many cases where Alan, Charlie and Walden trying to get back together with an ex that they still care about, only for it to go badly, often because they try to get with a new girl or an another old ex, thinking that they won't get back with the other one. Like in many sitcoms, one or more characters will talk about something, gradually building some sort of foundation. Maybe Charlie's explaining how he sees some part of his life of debauchery. Maybe Alan is explaining how things work with Judith. Maybe Jake is describing something that happened in school. Other characters will chime in, giving details or asking for them. Maybe draw a comparison. Maybe insist that they should be explaining it through some metaphor. And in the best of cases, it reaches a satisfying climax. And I would say that, yeah, mo most of the time. Now, yeah, it really looks like there's way too little light, but... Um, yeah, I'm afraid there's not really anything I can do about it. It's this is the only place that there's a couch here, and if you actually ask me why a man with back issues did not just move the couch, I will have to reach through your monitor and just you know just give you a little smack upside the head. That's all. I'm not threatening grievous bodily harm here is what I'm getting at. Frankly, I'm still not entirely sure how to get past the hurdle of actually reaching through the monitor. But I do have experience and patience and a man can do anything if he has those. Now, the various characters, especially Charlie and Alan, will sometimes try to fix the inherent issues that haunt them. Excuse me. There we go. That's better. And Charlie will try to resolve his issues with his mother, which make him drink, smoke, and have tons of casual sex. And will try to resolve his issues with his mother, which make him try to please everybody, but especially women that have impossible to live up to expectations of him. And in typical sitcom fashion, they almost always fail. Now, the set to the front door of the Malibu Beach House ends not many steps away from the door, so there are a number of scenes where someone will say goodbye on those steps, or someone will walk off, something will be yelled from off stage or to off stage. There are a few support groups on the show for men who are having problems with their significant others, and many will be divorced. Now, some call the show Two and a Half Jokes Repeated. I would argue that they are excellent at telling those two and a half jokes in such different ways each time they tell them and to me that's good enough that you don't need more than two and a half jokes but you know if you're not good at telling those jokes in different ways 
Nice. Ah, sorry, never mind. I mean, a few steps back. And, yeah. That's good enough that you don't need more than two and a half jokes if you're good at telling those jokes different ways so much of the time. And again, there will occasionally be where, where it'll be very, very similar, but just the material is just different enough. Just, you know, there, there will be enough time between the different instances and the performances are so good. You know, if if someone actually, you know, you could make a drinking game out of just, you know, well, heard that joke before. Like, if I sat down and tried to count every single time someone other than Alan points out how creepy Alan is, yeah, it's it's a ton, but again, they, they get, you know, the, there's a... Um, Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna, there's one where, I don't want to give away the very best of them. Let's see. For example, Walden might say, it's not so much the things you say as the way you say them. No, it's also the things you say. And, you know, another time he might say the, the... You know, every, everything you say is wrong, or, you know, stuff like that. You know, that is essential. you know, you, yeah, those, those are two different ways to say the same thing. But, yeah, I, I would say they're, they're different enough, and they're spaced out enough, and the performances are just so strong. Even, even for characters I don't like, the performances I, I tend to not have issue with. Now, and like Married with Children, it's not filmed on very many different locations. It's mostly the the couple of sets. You know the the let's see, so yeah, the the front steps, the the living room, the kitchen, the the and. Charlie's master bedroom and Alan's guest bedroom. And then, you know, other times will be, you know, Jake's classroom or the hallway of Jake's, you know, school. And yeah, you know, in part, like, I can imagine part because of budget. And... Yeah, the laughs come mostly from dialogue, from the interaction between the characters and primarily the main cast, regulars, and verbal comedy, a plenty, turns of phrases, insults, sarcasm, great body language and facial expressions, great timing. Now, let's see. Yeah, I guess this is different enough that I forgot that I wrote this more than one place, but great sitcoms set up a situation then build upon it, making it increasingly funnier and out there without going too far and while keeping to a pace where the audience can follow the logic. And the dialogue does this now. Yes, less scope and dynamic pacing, but smoother flow when compared to The Simpsons and South Park, which to be fair are animated so they can go more places inexpensively and have more excuse me, well, cartoony things happen. You know, like I said, you know, sometimes a character will fall onto the floor or the like in on, on this show where, you know, that might be a lot bigger on something like Simpsons or South Park. Now, let's see. And a running gag is that men want a dumb hot girl, not one that isn't those things at least hot and yeah maybe also dumb makes it easier now let's see and this is where I compare it to hello hello the humor is a good mix between the typically crude and silly humor of say Benny Hill and the more witty verbal humor of shows such as Black Adder and some black comedy 
Now, the show is incredibly tight and hilarious in writing just about every line or every few lines and every or every few physical gestures or sometimes just even like a look, even, even subtle looks get uproarious laughter from the studio audience and myself. And among the subjects that this gets into for joke material are sex, love, marriage, parenting, etc. Now, that brings us to the next section called Seasons. Now, the... Hmm, right, I need to make sure I don't, let's see, yes, so I made sure for, for every single season to note, does it have a great season opener, is the overall season great, and is the season finale great, and they, they are, they every single, yeah, there's there's not a single episode of this show that I don't love. I will admit that I don't love all of them equally, and there are some, you know, some some of the more gross out get yeah less less love, but it's still yeah. And the series finale appears to be planned as such, wasn't canceled unexpectedly. Now, a few seasons were shortened, such as season eight. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna. Yeah, some some of the seasons are shorter. If you very badly want to know which, without watching the show, you can look it up on IMDb or Wikipedia. Now, let's see. The. Yeah, basically, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with almost every single season has at least one holiday special or major event, and each and every single one of those are amazing. And you know, yeah, it'll you know they they have a bunch of Christmas specials, and all of them are amazing, and they have. Yeah, yeah. O occasionally other holidays, I guess I sh Yeah, just briefly, you know, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, and then they have, like, events like a wedding, you know, maybe someone gives birth, and yeah, animals are amazing. So, let's see. Yeah, and you know, the the further into the show you get, the better it gets, which I realize I somewhat also said, but it was amazing from the very start. Like, I I was a little worried. I, in over the last three weeks, I watched at least one episode per day and two episodes from every single season. So 24 episodes, which, you know, the, the ones of you that are good at math will have realized that means... At least some of, those days, some of those days, it was more than one episode. I was a little bit worried that when I went back and watched earlier, you know, season, episodes from earlier seasons, that I was going to be like, oh, wow, I, I, it's, it's so much better now that it just, but no, it, it already, you know, I'll admit that I made sure to pick the, you know, well, even with that, I mean, it was it was difficult to pick because, yeah, there aren't really any episodes. There are there isn't a single episode that I don't love. So even that was difficult. And even with that, yeah, I I laughed my ass off at season one episodes. I I watched I rewatched one season one episode the same day that I watched the the very last season 12 episode so literally and and like you know i immediately i was like wow i i really hadn't realized because it happened so gradually but you can kind of tell that these, you know 
I'm, I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't think anybody, you know, they, they didn't age poorly, but you can tell that it was, you know, that, that years passed, over a decade passed for, for, you know, some of these performers. But no, it was still, it was incredibly funny. It just, it didn't go as far. But the jokes were still incredibly funny, and they, yeah, they still work. And I do think that's, I think it's too bad when you, you know, when when you do a later season or a sequel or, you know, whatever, when you do a follow-up, I think it, it's too bad if what you do just makes you not want to re revisit the, the earlier ones. You know, I, I don't think... I think you should just try to do something different, you know, for, for, yeah, I think, yeah, that's, now, let's see, but yeah, I was, I was very, very critical, I tried really hard to find episodes, because I feel it, it does strengthen my argument to say all the episodes are good, except for these few, if I can come up with just a few, but I, I, I can come up with a single one. And I acknowledge there, there are some people who love some seasons, but hate later seasons. You know, there's, I, th I forget his, his username, but there's one guy on Metacritic. I'm not entirely sure if it was all 12, but certainly he wrote season reviews for several of the seasons. And yeah, it's, it's the, you can, you can very clearly tell when he he was he was very honest about which seasons he did love he he liked which he didn't like which he loved which he hated and yeah i mean clearly some viewers were ultimately over the course of the show turned off by it or felt that it got better and yeah i just i mean i guess let's hypothetically say that the first episode i watched was like season 10 and then I tried to watch season one. I could imagine that then I might have been disappointed. But I think it's difficult to make a sequel that doesn't look better than what came before it. If it's what you watch, if, if it's the first thing you watch, you know. So, but I, I did watch the, you know, the very first episode I watched was the pilot. And I was hooked right from the start. Now, the, let's see, and, and that's the thing, you know, with, with Married with Children, I forget the number, but I think it was like three or four, and all but one of them were failed pilots, and failed pilots, backdoor pilots, failed backdoor pilots, oh, I've, I don't think I've ever seen a failed backdoor pilot that wasn't terrible, I have to be honest, I don't think I've ever seen one. And and when I was when I was younger, I didn't even you know I watched the the Married with Children episodes. I didn't even know that that's what they were. Maybe in part because they didn't take off. And, and I I didn't I didn't at the time even know that that was a thing you know. But now that you know later growing up and realizing that it's called a backdoor pilot. Then I was like, oh right, that's why that's so bad. You have all these characters that aren't usually on the show and they you know they're not in any episode before or after and they're just they're not as funny as the one i don't mind if i saw a backdoor pilot that wasn't terrible i would be 100 percent honest about it i would love that you know i don't think pilot episodes in general are terrible though a lot of them are kind of underwhelming and it is like the shows tend to get better after the pilot episode which is another reason I'm so impressed with something like this, you know, where, yeah, the pilot is hilarious. I, yeah, and, and the finale, the, the C series finale. Now, let's see, this, ah, excuse me, I'm just going to have to, there we go. And, you know what? I'm gonna, yeah, just briefly. Yeah.
Yes. So. Characters main. Now, something I had honestly completely forgotten about post 80s and 90s sitcoms, and that I do think is worth noting, this show, unlike Married with Children, not every single quote unquote main character appears in every single episode for the seasons where they are listed as main characters. I mean, there are definitely episodes where Marcy really didn't need to appear in that episode that focused on the Bundy family. It, there, there really are, like, there are episodes where she just, you know, shows up at the door and she's like, did you know that X, Y, and Z, and maybe she doesn't even stay for very many minutes, and then she leaves and she isn't in the rest of the episode, and it's, it is like, yeah, when, when I realized, you know, on this show, like, there are, there are cast members who are listed as regulars, who are not in every single episode. And when I realized that, I thought back, and yeah, I mean, I was just so used to it. I didn't, I didn't realize that there were sitcoms, shows in general, sure, but sitcoms where, and and I do think on in some of the very first episodes, some some of the uh, season one episodes, and that's you know part of it is this had. Mm, yeah, relatively large main cast, and some of these characters don't really, you know, they don't like spending time together. So it is like, a fa I mean, on Married with Children, you know, the main cast are the Bundy family, and then Marcy, and the, the man she's at that point married to. You know, that's based, those are the main characters, and yeah, the neighbors will come over, and Maybe they won't stay for very long, but that's it. And the rest of them, well, they're a family. You know, they, they live in the same house. But with this, you know, in addition to the, the three people, you know, Charlie Allen and Jake, who live in Charlie's house, you have their mother, who neither, you know, neither of the Harper brothers can stand their mother. You have the, the stalker character, who also, especially early on, really doesn't get along with and you have the ex-wife so you know the the ex-wife is not that difficult to write in because an episode will often have her you know dropping off Jake for the you know every other weekend or Alan you know dropping off Jake after every other weekend you know so that makes sense, but the the mother and stalker. I mean, if it it if if they keep showing up episode after episode, it gets silly to hear them say jokes about how they don't see each other very often. You know, because that is very often a joke that will yeah yeah. In some seasons, some of these main characters will be in a lot of episodes, and the plot will be about them. But then in other episode of seasons, some later seasons, not as much. Although they may still be listed as main characters. So now, yeah, this this is where I start getting into. Excuse me. This is where I start getting into the specific main characters. Charlie Harper. He's always been popular and focused more on getting women and alcohol than learning or having even basic skills of getting by. An early episode has, sees his housekeeper, Berta, temporarily leave his employment, and he is seen to be unable to even make coffee. He, you know, just, and, and he, can't, he can't do laundry, just incredibly basic things that you really need to be able to do. And he's used to paying his way out of his problems. He doesn't like having to put in very much effort. And because of this, he gives up and or turns to drinking when faced with something he has to do that isn't easy, even if doing so hurts himself more than anyone else. And... Excuse me. There's... Yeah, when, when he finds out he has no money, he has trouble not tipping the pizza guy dozens of dollars. And, 
you know, he ends up having money again, but through no effort of his own. And he is complete. He he is like it. Alan trying to get him adjusted to buying inexpensive foods. You know, he's not even saying you can't like. He's not saying you have to starve. He's saying you're gonna have to accept that the stuff you eat is gonna be something you buy like in bulk. And he is, it is like pulling teeth. He is just not at all. Yeah. He's been living a carefree existence since he was a teenager, and the fact that he is now about 40 years old, and that that lifestyle has taken a toll on his body, is something he has serious trouble accepting. There, you know, in, in episodes he will, like, be with women that are, like, half his age, and genuinely be, like, it's, it's, you know, yeah, cl clearly the, he's with them to feel young himself. He's not, yeah, and, and there's, there's one point where he does date someone a little, you know, yeah, someone older than usual, and, you know, he's, he's telling his psychiatrist, you know, I'm, you know, the, the woman that I'm currently dating she's she's older than the ones I usually date, to which she responds, well, they couldn't be any younger than the ones you usually date without you having to, to what was it, re to register for a certain, uh, yeah, to, to go on a list. or Yeah, the I, f I forget the exact, t yeah, and and there's, there's one point where he tries to pick up a young woman and she's like, I'm sorry, sir. I don't have daddy issues. Now, before he wrote, let's see. And yeah, he appears on a commentary track and he says he doesn't like when he has to sit at the piano and sing and hated, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I can't play a single note or a single key. I promised that if the show became a hit, I would learn, but I reneged on that. It would frequently trick Alan into doing or saying something stupid. Let's see. Because of situations that where he's more familiar with what to do, Alan will do the same. A lot of the time the show is on Charlie's side, but every so often it will show that he has serious issues. He watched Cinderella and thought she's one of those women you can't get rid of if you sleep with them once. And let's see. And when Jake hangs up sexy posters on the wall, Charlie says, in a while these eyes are going to be filled with judgment and condemnation. Okay, maybe that's just me. And when it comes to Alan not paying rent, Let's see. And if he can't or won't pay rent, he won't have influence in Charlie's house. And the difference they make. Let's see. And their differences make for com conflicts, as well as Jake being stupid, overeating, etc. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Some of this stuff. Yeah. Charlie is actually very irritable and quick to insult you know, Alan and Jake and others, whenever he isn't drinking, gambling, or humping. And sometimes Alan can go a lot longer than Charlie without expressing his frustration with the rest of the world, especially those who have hurt him personally. And from early in the show, he does clearly have issues because of his shallow lifestyle and does sometimes want to settle down. And I... Excuse me. I put in some catchphrases. Let's see. Yeah, when when Charlie, yeah, the the one the person who put this in MDB quote section, put it that you know, repeated line by Charlie whenever he's put in sticky situation. Ooh, that ship has sailed. And, yeah, when he senses trouble. Oh, boy. And something else says a lot. 
what the hell are you doing? And when someone says something dumb, hello? And another repeat line is not coming back. Let's see. And final repeat line. Get out. And Charlie Sheen uses his personal history, and it's you know that is obviously why he was cast. And for people who haven't watched any of this, yes. When he was on the show, he was still incredibly funny, like earlier in his career. Moving on to Alan Harper, chiropractor. He always insists he's a real doctor, with most people asserting that chiropractors are not real doctors. He could have been a real doctor, he just didn't want to spend four years in South, South America. Seriously though, I personally have great respect for chiropractors. They've helped me a ton. He thinks a lot of problems can be solved by making pro and con lists. He's been neurotic since he was a child, bullied when he was younger and still today by his peers, including Charlie. Constitutionally uncool. On occasion, he'll try to act cool. He does sometimes express believing he is better than others, since he was a teacher's pet, straight-A student. And Chuck Lowry said about Alan, I like to call him Job. We punish him for trying to be a decent citizen, decent father, and decent brother. Now, in later seasons, he he's really no longer trying to be decent too much anymore. Very selfish in what he does. And, you know, the... the yeah. After... It's, it's that thing of... Yeah, the lighting really isn't... Yeah. That ship has sailed. The, the, it's, um, there are other things you can look at in the frame that are, are better lit, but just, just look at this, all the, how, how bright this, this curtain is. The, the, right. He will sometimes, it's, it's that thing of the, the, like, when it comes to movies, comedy sequels, and when it comes to long-running sitcoms, Characters that, you know, were re relatively well-behaved will start, you know, becoming more crass and, and, you know, they'll engage in more debauchery. They will become a-holes, you know, more, more or less, because that's, you know, it's, it's easier to write funny stuff if the character themselves can be just can can do something like that instead of having to instead of them being straight man and you having to constantly get other characters near them to do these kind of you know to do debauchery and be an a hole yeah it's just yeah now alan always tries to save money where he can never turns down a free meal no matter the circumstances and yeah, I have an example, but it's in a late season. But just, yeah, even even if the people don't really like him, even if people don't want him there, even if he barely has a reason to be there, yeah. He says it's because he's poor. In fact, broke. Charlie says it's because he's cheap. Other people tend to agree with Charlie on that. In later seasons, he takes some pride in his skills as a leech. Occasionally he will have some money to spend and the show goes back and forth on whether he's still incredibly cheap or if he just wastes on stuff that's completely unnecessary. I approve. He doesn't earn very much money on, on the show, you know, showing both sides of that. Obviously I don't approve of people, you know, wasting money or being unnecessarily cheap. Now... He doesn't earn very much money, and he has to pay child support. And, you know, he really got screwed over by lawyers, including... Yeah, several several lawyers, I guess I shouldn't give away. Charlie badly wants him to move out, increasing over the seasons. Not as much as for, at first. There are some episodes where he attempts to move out, and it shows just how bad it goes when he's living with someone else. 
those are some of the best episodes of the show. I'm really glad that they went there several times. Or how bad of a place he could afford. In later seasons, they start making jokes about how he would sleep with, for example, Charlie or other men without expressing any actual erotic feelings for men for enough money or for letting him stay in their house. He says, nevertheless, with great exasperation, both in great both in feeling and hilarity. And say, yeah, let me just. Nevertheless. And something else he will say is, Holy Mother of God! He always manages to say the exact wrong thing. So do others, but he may... He, he's probably the worst offender at that. You know, Jake says more stupid things, but Alan, when Alan says something wrong, it, like, it just... If everything just stops dead, and it's like... Everybody else is like, Should we point out how bad that is to say, or should we just hope... Just, just pretend that he didn't say that. There's, there's, um, yeah, I, yeah, there's one point where he tries to say something flattering to his girlfriend, and she responds, that is exactly wrong. Now, there's a running gag where people think he's 60 rather than late 30s or 40. In early seasons, he can't get a date, but over the course of the show, he will have... You know, he, he will go on dates, and he'll even have some long-term romantic relationships. And he definitely does get better at flirting, although there's still relatively few women who want him. And I think... I guess... Yeah, I'm, I'm just... I won't say exactly when it happens on the show, but... After a while of the show, after a while of them where they don't change the status quo too much. And it's it's a sitcom thing, you know. An episode will end with the status quo back, you know. Yeah. After a while of that, and I don't think they did it for too long, but after a while, they clearly made an active decision to put the, char put the main characters in at least slightly different situations. And I think that was exactly the right thing to do and and they don't the the new situations don't overstay their welcome either i'm not going to give away how long they're around but they they really get great new material out of new situations the, the new status quo so i i'm really really glad that they they did that the i i think maybe some other sitcoms should try that because they really you know excuse me you know alan yeah alan being in a long-term relationship and charlie also are are some of the some some really great things they they come up with incredibly funny new stuff to do with them once they're in long-term relationships and with, without losing the the character it's not as though they suddenly become a completely different person now, let's see. And... Yes, so his catchphrases. Whenever he's stressed out. Ay, 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 ay. And... Oh, sorry. That's the only one that... They've, that was the only one listed on IMDb. And I didn't write any of my own. Now, he's played by John Cryer. And I've only seen him in this. Hot Shots and... Superman 4. So I can't really compare him to his other one. And I, I barely remember him in Hot Shots. I'm sorry. I remember Charlie Sheen in that. But I didn't know John Cryer at the time. I mean, what, I, I've, I've looked at, like, on IMDb, you know, the, the quotes page for his character. And I'm like, oh, I kind of remember that. But just, yeah. It, it, I, I, I don't remember when I watched Hot Shots. But I, it, is it? Is it 20 years? I, I can't rule out that it's been 20 years. So, yeah. And I only watched it once. Pretty sure it was only once. Let's see. And, but he is incredible here. That was where I was going with that. He feels like any minute now, 
he might have a complete nervous meltdown as a result of all the abuse and problems he's faced his entire life. More or less everyone on the show abuse more or less everyone else at some point. And in the gag reels, John Cryer, in the gag reels I've seen, I haven't, I don't, I, there might be ones that I haven't watched. The, my set didn't have one for every single year, so there might be ones. He is the most frequent to mess up and the most funny when anyone messes up, himself or others. Jake Harper loves being taught by his Uncle Charlie things that are usually supposed to be off limits. Lazy, once he has aged to the point where the censors would bank off about it, the writers have him smoke pot as a running thing. Even before he moved in with Charlie, he was very unwilling to do schoolwork. This frustrates his parents, but brings joy to Charlie. And Char Charlie himself, never having had to work hard, you know, and yet succeeding, you know, it makes it difficult for, for Alan to convince Jake, because he's like, well, he, Charlie's way more successful than you, and he didn't work. You worked inc incredibly hard, and you're not very successful, so, yeah. He puts more energy into avoiding having to do schoolwork than just doing it. It's so bad that he has to go to summer school. Otherwise, almost fails out of school repeatedly, unable to graduate to the next grade. And there's sometimes a running gag of him being threatened with military school, with Charlie remarking, it won't be our military either. He will get common sayings and words wrong, redu redundant becomes redundant, irreconcilable differences becomes unrecognizable differences. And, a brief quote, this is the best part of a road trip, the friendly banter. Well, that and saying funny things to each other. He's frequently too stupid to realize when he's being mocked by others, which I may have put elsewhere. Yeah. And, in reality, this is also from a commentary track where the brothers and the kid was on. In reality, the, the Jake actor is really smart. Now, he loves the kinds of things that you'd expect someone his age to. So, early on, juice, cereal, and video games. Let's see. And they do a bunch of fart jokes and other bodily function humor. Stupidity jokes. What kids care about jokes with his character. Charlie and sometimes Alan, as well, will joke about brutal bodily harm to him, even killing him. And let's see. And jokes about that Alan shouldn't have had Jake since Jake is so stupid. Lots of jokes about having brain damage due to lead paint, etc. And when he becomes a teenager, let's see, there's, on, on one of the DVD special features, in an interview, Holland Taylor points out Jake is now talking back to his father and uncle with wit. Excuse me. And let's see. And they talk about how the actor was cute and sweet, and he's still sweet even though the character is surly as a teenager. Now, let's see. personally, I didn't like him all that much when the show started, but he grows into some someone that's more interesting. It's, it's, it's one of those things where just, the show doesn't tend to spend too much time with only him without other characters that are funnier, you know, so it's not, yeah, I think if there was like an episode where it was just him constantly and just the, the you know, not that interesting jokes about him, that might be an episode I, I wouldn't love. Man, I'm gonna miss new episodes of this show. I mean, I already do, but it's gonna kick in real hard. Let's see. The first time that, yeah, or you know, when when he wants to impress a girl, Charlie tries to to help him with it, and he really badly doesn't want it, and you know. 
the the yeah you know he says I, I want someone who loves a girl and Sharon says I've loved tons of girls to which he responds that's not love that's just sex to which Charlie responds I'm sorry I don't follow and and you know yeah the the Jake then points out you know or sorry a few more lines and Jake points out how many if you died tomorrow how many of those girls would come to your funeral and you know Charlie says a lot Granted, a few of them would show up just to make sure I was really dead, but I feel confident that the overall tone of the event would be one of sadness. And sometimes Jake will really screw with Charlie, you know. And yeah, I, I, I find Jake a lot funnier when he's not saying much and eating a lot, but just, or, or just excited about something stupid. Or, or, you know, lazy about it. But when he's, like, applying himself and actually, yeah, screwing with, you know, to, saying something to, to Charlie that really just, yeah, he can, he can be really clever and smart sometimes. And more than once, he engages in blackmail. Let's see. Yeah, and there's this, there's there's at least one episode where Jake and Charlie are interested in the same woman, and Charlie thinks that he can just get Jake out of, like, yeah, it's still running, that he can, you know, he's he's got all this experience, and Jake's just, he's, you know, to him, he's Jake's still a kid, so he, yeah, he thinks that he can just get Jake to, to back off, but Jake doesn't back off, and in fact, fights fire with fire. Now, let's see. The, the, let's see. Yeah, he actually, the, the... Yeah, you know, when, when the two of them are discussing which one should back off, and Charlie is, you know, yeah, he's, he's figuring he can get, you know, this kid to, to just back off, and he's trying the, the yeah, I, th I think it's when Charlie is, like, threatening him, and then Jake says so loud that for sure she can hear well, I think she's gorgeous, which, yeah, could severely hurt his chances with, yeah. Now, let's see. And other time, you know, he, not scared of Charlie, mocking him even to his face. Now, let's see. And there's a, a time where the, the, yeah, Charlie is like, yeah, if, if Charlie, <clears throat> excuse me, if Jake is trying to convince Charlie to do something and Charlie's in bed with a woman, then Jake might say things that that woman doesn't want to hear until Charlie eventually just does the thing that Jake wants him to. Now, let's see. And he's played by Angus T. Jones. And let's see. I'm I'm aware that you know later in the show he you know he decried the show, but before that point certainly. The actor is clearly enthusiastic in his performance a lot of the time. The the you know keeping in mind at the start of the show he's a ten year old, you know it's the, being being in show business is extremely hard work, and when you're ten, 
and you're smart and you don't necessarily, you know, yeah, he, you might not want to, you, you might be more focused on, okay, you know, okay. Yeah, especially considering that his character is so frequently so stupid. At the very, very start of the show, he's not stupid, but, you know, yeah. They later, he got stupid. Turns out it was funnier. Now, and it's also clear John Cryer and Charlie Sheen definitely enjoy working with Angus T. Jones. But, yeah, just briefly about, you know, basically he, he converted to Christianity and he said that he felt the show was, you know, I forget the exact words, but basically sinful. And he didn't want people, you know, he was asking people who liked him to stop watching it and such. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that a lot of people who work in show business with kind of, you know, with material that deals with sex or drugs and such, you know, eventually they start to feel bad and maybe convert to Christianity and, you know, leave that... You know, it, it's the the if if you're not in show business, you might be surprised by just how much, like you know, the, the thing is the people in show business, they can they can do almost anything they want. Until you know, as as long as it doesn't, you know, yeah. So some some keep doing it until it destroys their career. But if, yeah, if you show up on set every day and you're not, you know, then, yeah, you're not going to be asked not to do drugs, not to drink, not to have casual sex, as long as it doesn't affect your work. And in fact, a lot of them specifically, you know, they, they it's, there's this idea that happiness is casual sex, drinking and drugs, just going, going completely nuts with that. And it's not, it's, it's, um... That that I'm not gonna get I'm I'm not gonna get into moralizing, but just a lot of people end up feeling that that isn't that that doesn't give set you know that doesn't satisfy them, and if you've either excuse me done that for a while, you know if if you do that for a long time, you might start feeling extremely bad about it, and then convert to Christianity and tell others that they shouldn't do that thing either. Or if you watch other people, I'm not saying that, I don't know, it's possible that Angus T. Jones didn't indulge in any of those things. I'm not saying he did. But if you watch other people do those things and you see how it affects them, you see it ruin good relationships in their life that, you know, yeah, some people ruin their career just to get just a little higher, just a little drunker, you know, yeah, it... it it makes you it it that doesn't mean that you should never do those things or that show business is inherently a bad thing you know just you know i it's it's funny i haven't heard as many people outside of show business who do those horrible things decrying the way they got their money you know the the, the wall street bankers also get really deep into coke Again, stereotype, but I'm saying a lot of them, you know, is, is that still a thing or was that only a thing decades ago? Anyway, you know, and, and certainly, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of rich people spend a lot of money and time and energy on things that are supposed to make you happy. And yeah, to, you know, with, with something like show business maybe there's especially a lot of them and it's all around you so but him having decried the show doesn't make me dislike the the yeah his his part on the show i don't you know yeah there there it's the same for same for yeah i guess i shouldn't yeah there there are others that also anyway Judith Harper, the stereotypical nasty and vengeful ex-wife who takes out her frustrations on her poor, you know, just trying to do the right thing, ex-husband. And he's, he's just trying to please her. 
where Alan has been miserable since the divorce because of it, she's been ecstatic. She's celebrating it. She's not completely one note, and you do completely 100% understand why she is angry and frustrated. Early on, you meet her parents who literally support Alan despite them being broken up, and they don't even try to understand why she got a divorce. And hey, you try being married to Alan, trying to raise Jake, and in general, being repressed in some ways because she's a woman, and just in general, yeah. And yeah. Catchphrase. <clears throat> Jake, your father's here. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, I can't I can't both imitate her voice and do the yeah. And she's played by Marin Hinkle. The actress took a pretty thankless role, and you know, a lot of the material has to do with her has the audience hating her. She's a character we're supposed to love to hate. But she makes the different aspects of her character all feel genuine. And I've, I, I really, I, I love her on this show. I love to hate, but I, I, I'm really glad she's on the show. I, 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 I love a lot of the, the stuff that she's really specifically involved in. And, you know, it's, it's the, I've, I haven't seen her in very much else. I'm pretty sure she's in quarantine. And she's like the, the, yeah, she's like, she has a kid and the kid gets interviewed and then she like, like the kid is saying something and then she offers in more stuff from off camera and then, you know, what's her name? I forget her first name, but the, the, she plays Deborah on Dexter. You know, she, she's like, look. When people watch an interview, it's going to distract them if someone speaks from off camera. So please don't, you know, oh, okay, I understand. And then, like, a minute later, she does it again. And, and you know, something Carpenter, I want to say her last name is Carpenter. It's like, I can't believe this one, you know. So, yeah, the, the you know, mother of a young child and, and just, yeah. She's in other stuff. I haven't seen that other stuff, I'm afraid, but... I mean, honestly, if they made, like, a spin-off of the show and she was the main character, I would watch the hell out of that. That would be awesome. Now, let's see. Moving on to Evelyn Harper, the mother of Charlie and Alan. She's never put a lot of effort into raising them. She blames them for everything. And she let her string of husbands treat them badly, including, you know... Yeah, the, the, I guess I shouldn't give away exactly what happens to her husband, but yeah, she got a bunch of stepfathers and yeah, she doesn't really love anyone except herself, but she does expect them to love her. Very Charles Foster Kane. There's an, there's a relatively early episode where, you know, basically she, she's, she's trying to explain why she doesn't want to go to like a a party in her honor and she says to alan your mother is a very sensitive woman i you know i i uh, crap what's the words the yeah so, something yeah i can tell when the people around me know that i hate them now, she sells real estate and focuses more on her work, social life, and her wealth than her family. Her initial reaction to learning that one of her sons was getting a divorce is to express her frustration with him for how it will impact her standing, how people perceive her. She sleeps with who she wants to, although that tends to be limited to other rich people. And she is, you know, bisexual and goes for pretty much any age, very perverted. She self-medicates with liquor and even drugs, and she's far from the only one on the show. Holland Taylor. I've only seen her in more recent movies where she's usually like the stern mother of a major character and such. And I think this might be the only role of hers and I know where she's also genuinely incredibly selfish. But you really buy that this character has been this selfish 
for the entirety of her two sons' lives. She is why Charlie is so hedonistic. She was a terrible role model for him in that regard. She is why Alan is so neurotic. She was always blaming everything on him. That's why he married a woman who also blames every problem on him. Now, let's see. Rose, Charlie's stalker. They had a one-night stand before he realized that she lives two doors down from him. And, let's see. And I, I'm not 100% certain if he did or didn't know that she was a stalker. You know, maybe, maybe he just didn't care. He didn't. He expect. He didn't expect to see her again, because most of his flings he don't. He does not see again. She frequently crawls onto his deck and tricks people who don't already know her, such as guests of Charlie's into letting her in by saying, you know, oh, she's going to clean the place, or she's a babysitter, or the like. On more than one occasion, she glued his cupboards shut. She gets along with Jake and is nice enough to Alan. Over the course of the show, she will carry out schemes to keep Charlie to herself. And these are sufficiently extreme, rare, and spaced out over the course of the show that you don't guess when something is a scheme. And, you know, there are times where Charlie will be like, this is, this, you know, he's, he's, he's paranoid. He is a paranoid person. Or he certainly won't guess all the de details of the scheme when they happen. Sometimes she will be away for several episodes, and sometimes the following is true of the first episode she's in in a season. They gave her absolutely amazing entrances into episodes or seasons. And... Yeah, I'm, t I'm not going to give any of these away, but they're amazing. Let's see. She does admit to at least some of the messed up things she does, but only seems to pretend to understand that she shouldn't do them. Again, changes. You know, varies from episode to episode. We meet members of her family at least once and see where some of the crazy comes from. She refuses to accept that Charlie is not going to get into a relationship with her. She's very frequently very gentle, sweet, chipper, accepting, giving. Basically because she herself has so few boundaries, when she sees other people doing something messed up, she tends to be very accepting of it. Occasionally she will be very overtly sinister with a lethal stare, stiff line delivery that makes it sound as though she's barely able to get the non-threatening words to pass her lips, and is barely able to keep herself from doing something extreme. She once smiles like Wednesday Adams at summer camp. Sometimes characters will insist that she and Charlie should get together, that she loves him in a good way, has degrees in creativity. Yeah, including in psychology. For a second I was like, did I pronounce that right? But yeah. A lot of jokes with her are really offensive to mentally ill. Like with Jake, I didn't like her so much when the show started, but she grows into someone that's more interesting. And she's played by Melanie Linsky. I've seen her in other stuff, but pretty much always before watching this show. So I, I don't remember her performance. She's, she's in that... Drew Barrymore Cinderella movie and I just I mean I know that she's in that movie I can I can I know what her face looks like and I and it looks the same in that movie but I don't remember a single thing she says or does in that movie and I'm not sure that there really is very much that she does say or do in that movie but anyway so yeah can't really compare her other performances to this but she really nails this mix of being reasonably charming and just radiating pure, unfiltered crazy. At times she's very calm, including when she's talking about crazy things, and she'll casually, sometimes accidentally, admit to stalker stuff she's done. And Candy, one of my absolute favorite characters of the show and of sitcom characters in general. She's one of a number of women on the show, many are one-off characters, who are in some ways as stupid as Kelly Bundy, another of my all-time favorite characters. 
of that show and of sitcom characters in general. I'm not going to give away when she enters the show, but it's not right away. She used to be with Charlie, and he tells Alan to get rid of her. And, yeah, I guess I'm not going to give away. Yeah, Alan realizes she's incredibly stupid, but also that she loves sex and starts going out with her. And, you know, despite the former and because of the latter, she can be very irresponsible, especially with money, which causes conflict between them. But they are really into each other, and it's it's actually it's genuinely really sweet to see them. I mean, he's no prize either, you know. Her, you know, she's stupid, and he has a laundry list of defects. And she literally, there's there's a time where he asks her, "Why why are you with me?" and yeah, she, her response is honest and, yeah, she, you know, and and then there are also episodes where she doesn't seem to care about him at all, but, yeah. And she's played by April Bowlby. A lot of her role is being a sex object in parts what she wears, what they have her do on screen, but also the things she says and that are said about her, but she makes you care about her as well. And Berta. Charlie's Housekeeper, one of the best characters on the show. I would watch a spin-off focused entirely on her. The typical snarky housekeeper character is also seen on The Nanny, Soap, and, you know, the, the one on Soap. He got a spin-off, didn't he? And the spin-off lasted longer than Soap. I... Have I checked if I could buy Soap and that other show he was on? Because he's incredibly funny. And I see, is he the one who plays the boss on Sports Night? He's also great there. Anyway, I love all of the these snarky housekeeper characters. She, you know, you know and, and then you have stuff like, what's that? Crap, what's it called? The, the um, Caroline in the City, where it's not a housekeeper but you know he's a he's a painter and you know underappreciated artist who's incredibly snarky those are often my favorite characters on on the shows she and her family are very trashy which causes problems for charlie since he is unable to keep her from bringing those problems into his house and life she knows people who can smuggle drugs or kill someone for money or the like she's very strong-willed and always frustrated with personal issues she can be incredibly badass, and she's clearly more in charge. Uh, you know, Charles is, Charles is not in charge. Berta is in charge. Let's see. And sometimes... Yeah, I'm not going to give away when, but sometimes she can be incredibly supportive, including characters that she clearly does not otherwise like. If there are problems and people are giving up, she might encourage them to keep trying. I voice type almost all of my notes for doing videos on this show, as I do until my, you know, carpal tunnel gets better. Let's see. Yeah, in, in general, for some reason, the name Berta is one of those words that it simply cannot get properly, similar to Thor, while I did videos on the MCU movies, when, when yeah, whenever he comes up. So whenever she has a line or is referred to by another character, I have to type her name manually, which is always something that fills me with glee. Because I love her character. Whenever she says something, whenever someone refers to her by name, she's hilarious. Let's see. Yeah, and catchphrases. When, whenever she sees a big mess being made, I ain't cleaning that up. And she always calls Alan Skippy. And played by Conchata Farrell. I've seen her in other things, but this is easily my favorite role of hers. The first time I saw, you know, saw her in an episode, I recognized her and immediately agreed with the casting choice. I was incredibly happy to see, you know, that she is 
Yeah, she she was actually not supposed to be in on the show for very long, but she was so popular that they kiss, you know kept her around, and it's the role that she was born to play. Excuse me. Let me just make sure that I can. There we go. Walden Schmidt. His last na name sounds like the S word, so they use that to sneak some swearing past the censors. He's a dot com billionaire. His wife is divorcing him because he hasn't matured past the age of 19. And the lighting is just absolutely, yeah. Okay, anyway, this has left him very depressed. He's literally introduced having just tried to drown himself in the ocean outside of the beach house and he fails for you know he's not the first to try and he fails for the same reason as the other person who tried because the water is really freaking cold he can behave like a child but is otherwise fairly nice to people and giving very naive he is completely hopeless at taking care of himself since his wife has done that since they were 19 and I said, uh, yeah, I guess I should say he's, I think he's about 29 when the show's, when he first appears on the show. And I'm not going to give away the exact circumstances, you know, you, you, a lot of people are already going to know that something happened to change the, the cast, but I'm not going to give away what it is here for those who don't know. And if, you, if you're watching this in like 10 years, maybe everyone, you know, maybe you haven't heard of the thing that happened. And all I'm telling you is that he's the main character on the show. At, you know, yeah. Let's, oh, one second. Yeah, he wants to get back together with his wife, but he is easy to talk into new relationships with women. He lacks experience, but since he's handsome, young, and rich, women are lining up to sleep with him. He gets to like casual sex, though it's new to him, but he does tend to want a long-term romantic relationship. He describes himself as a serial monogamist, which is a good idea. And let's see. Yeah, the, the show uses that well. So, let's see. When he gets especially childish, he can be very snarky and sarcastic. That is about as far as it goes. He isn't, you know... Yeah, he isn't anywhere near as bitter and likely to lash out as Charlie, you know. He doesn't... He doesn't usually try to take revenge on people or steal from them or encourage them to do harmful things to themselves and others and such. He... In some ways, he's probably the closest the, the show comes to... A, a pure character, someone who does not do bad. Yeah, he's he's a nice person, but he does also sometimes do. Yeah, I I wouldn't really want a pure character on this show. You know, it's good in real life. It's not as funny in sitcoms. Excuse me. He seems to genuinely like basically everyone except Bridget's new boyfriends. His ex-wife's new boyfriends, and treats them well, even if there are some he'd rather spend time with than others. Excuse me. Occasionally, he can be devastatingly honest to someone's face. Charlie hates everyone and only treats people well when he thinks that will help him feed his base desires. Charlie Harper is basically an out-of-control wrecking ball or bulldozer. In his never-ending quest to drink, gamble, and hump. He will lay waste to everything in his path, where Walden Schmidt can be kind of a bull in a china shop. As long as he's calm, you're fine. But his extreme mood swings can be devastating, somewhat like Homer Simpson, but it usually doesn't take as little as it sometimes does for Homer to set Walden off. And it's mostly not physical destruction, but he can say and or admit self-destructive things when upset. But... Yeah, basically, with him, 
both of them can get these extreme mood swings, but with Charlie, there's this kind of like base level of just being an a-hole to people around him. That's that's kind of his if if he's not currently, you know, drinking or smoking or having sex, then he's yeah, he's mean to people. He's he's an a-hole to other people. Where Walden is kind of as a base, he's he's nice to other people, but the the yeah, it it his his mood swings are more sudden. I'm not sure I would really say either gets more I mean Charlie gets more physically destructive than Walden does, but otherwise their their mood swings yeah, it's it's more sudden with Walden also because a lot of the time he seems well adjusted, which Charlie never really does. You never you know no one really buys that Charlie is a well adjusted person. Now Walden can also cause a lot of offensive material and events to take place, but he genuinely doesn't mean to upset others and is surprised when it happens instead of just not caring, like Charlie. Again, with some exceptions. He's friends with Alan, but like everyone, especially... Yeah. He gets irritated with him and does even occasionally hit him. Not enough to do permanent damage. Now, let's see. Yeah, I, I would say he made the show more positive when when he's on, but I would say without losing the, the overall edge. Now, let's see. Since he loves the women he's with and tries to treat them well, he can also be a really bad influence on Jake. For example, he doesn't think about the fact that he is much smarter than Jake, and Jake would not be able to make a billion dollars after dropping out of college, like he himself did. And... let's see... I guess... Hmm... Yeah, he is younger than Charlie and doesn't have his bad habits when it comes to drinking, smoking, and drugs. Now... In some ways, he's as stupid as Jake, and since he's not that much older than him, but far more successful than him, it can give Jake the wrong idea. He is a genius when it comes to the computer technology that made him rich, and occasionally he's incredibly insightful. But otherwise, he can be a real simpleton, which is also not something that stays entirely constant. He's... he's uh, there, there are some things where he's... He really knows things. Now, some of the inventions and programs that he comes up with go directly into the sci-fi, into sci-fi, such as a mind-reading computer program now, he, I guess this, yeah, this isn't a constant, but at times he's completely comfortable with being naked around his house, even in front of strangers. He might sit on the couch naked in between Alan and Jake. If he sees a camera, he's likely to wave at it and say, hello, in a goofy voice. Now, he created a website, blungogo.com, that Microsoft bought for 1.3 billion. Now, let's see. Yeah, there's a there's a duty special feature where actor Ashton Kutcher is so calm, quiet and reflective out of character. And the actors behind Evelyn and Berta talk about how perfect his introduction with Yeah, I mean, I talk about, yeah, I talk about that in another video, so I'm gonna, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, 
played by Ashton Kutcher. I haven't watched that 70s show, probably won't. He spent, let's see. Yeah, I'm not gonna go into that. Anyway, I mostly just know his reputation. I get why people hate him. You know, he was on um, Punked. He, yeah, some, some of the comedy stuff. You know, I've, I've seen occasional trailers and such. I think, I honestly don't even remember, but I did watch Dude, Where's My Car? And if I recall, no one is at all that funny. Even John William Scott, who usually is. It's not just him who isn't funny. I think I watched Just Married. I don't remember anything about it. I maintain that he does a pretty good job in the butterfly effect. And I completely understand why people find him obnoxious. What little I know of him does tell me that this show does use him well. He can be goofy and mature, but he can also have this kind of determined and angry. And now my physical therapist said, you know, the yeah, well, the show with with Walden just isn't it. Ha it doesn't have the same energy as without. And I can see what he means, but I don't think it's. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think it really hurt the the show when they brought him on. I, I do think it helped, but I, I get why you know if, if you're really if you really badly. Yeah, I can't go into it with that, but but I already talked about it in another video, so it's not necessary. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's see. I was. Hmm. Yeah, right. Some some points about the the Yeah, the the female, the, the women. Man, it's annoying that I can't do anything about this lighting. Yeah. Again, there are there are other things to look at in the frame. Yeah, you know, the women are, in my opinion, one of the best parts of the show. If, if this show only talked about women and didn't have, you know, female characters, female actors on, it wouldn't be, yeah, it would, it would be 60% less of, of the, the masterpiece that it is. Now, let's see... And yeah, try, yeah, a bar, yeah, a bunch of what I'm about to say comes from a DVD special feature called "The Women of Two and a Half Men." Charles Sheen says we couldn't do it without them, without the women of Two and a Half Men. They're sitting right there. They're listening to me right now. And Chuck Lorre points out the women drive almost all the action. Lee Aronson. I believe, yeah, that's the, the co-creator. He said, the men would not be who they were without the women. And let's see. And, and he talks about, you know, the show doesn't have, you know, a smart wife, but a stupid husband character, which is really a lot of sitcoms. We don't have any grown up women. And let's see. And Chuck Lorre talks about how Berta started as a guest character. They were determined to keep her around. And Marin Hinkle, the, the who plays Judith, she sounds so different from Judith in interviews. It's it's incredible. But I mean, that's the thing. If if you if you're used to seeing someone portray a character and then you see them out of character, you know you're used to them being like that. In interviews, she doesn't seem at all. And and Rose doesn't. Yeah. You know, with with Conchata Pharrell, her and her and Berta, there's there's definitely some, uh, yeah. And and I don't get the sense that Holland Taylor is actually such, you know, anywhere near as bad of a person as she she is. But the the, the kind of determination of of Evelyn does come very naturally to Holland Taylor. It it appears. Now let's see. And yeah, and Conchata Farrell talks about 
that I think it's that Berta and Charlie probably best friends, even though na I, neither would acknowledge it. And they call Conchata Pharrell Chatty as a nickname. And Holland Taylor talks about how Evelyn is rude to her sons and they're rude back. So they take everything with a grain of salt. Conchata Pharrell points out that Berta and Evelyn are happy with themselves, but Judith isn't. Conchata Pharrell points out that Judith's... And that's... Hmm. No, actually, yeah, I'm gonna get... Both Judith's husbands are dopes, and I'll get into Judith's other husband soon. In the next section, I believe. They talk about how the stalker character is very unusual, and Rose is both loving and insane. Ren Hinkle talks about how she would like for all the women to end up maybe at a wedding together, getting drunk and talking about how they feel about the men. And I'm not going to talk about if that happens or not. But yeah, she as an actress is not at all like her character. I'm, I'm glad. I I think she deserves to be a lot happier than her character is. I'm not I'm not saying Judith doesn't deserve to be happy. I'm saying she isn't. And I hope Mary Hinkle is. She, she really deserves it. She gives such a great performance on the show. She's absolutely hilarious. And again, it's, it's such a thankless role. You know, I mean, even... As, as obnoxious and, you know, even characters like Peggy Bundy and Al Bundy, at least they get some moments where they're, you know, they're, they're not constantly just, but Judith's, like, as, as a general rule, it's, it's, yeah, anyway. And Conchata Pharrell says, me... Holland and Marin used to have a joke. If the title included the women in the show, it would be two and a half men, three bitches, and a psycho. And yeah, if you don't know what the yeah the 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 psycho is Rose, the three bitches are Judith, Evelyn, <coughs> and Berta. Ah, excuse me. <coughs> it's cold out and that makes ah. I will be back in less than 30 seconds I guarantee Major guests. Did I spend over an hour talking about characters? Wow. Okay. Main characters and that. Yeah. So. Mia. She and Charlie are really into each other and she tries to fix him. Make him more responsible, have a more healthy lifestyle when it comes to what he puts in his body and whether or not he works out. And she has, let's see, yeah, and her catchphrase. Whenever Charlie says something outrageous, are you out of your freaking mind? And the actress is Emmanuel. Vogier, I, I don't know, I, I, for, I should have looked it up, but I'm guessing French, both names French, but yeah, you know, she, she's beautiful, but you also believe that she's the kind of person that will ask for a certain standard for you to be with her, and she, I think I've liked her in everything I've seen her in, which admittedly isn't a lot, but yeah, she's, she's really great, here and elsewhere. Chelsea, she and Charlie are really into each other, and she wants more out of the relationship. Where Mia tries to fix him, make him more responsible, Chelsea simply wants them to do other things than get takeout, watch TV, and have sex. 
they go to couples counseling to improve their relationship, which is basically her and the female therapist destroying Charlie for everything about him being wrong. At one point she has a really bad cold and he suddenly has to take care of her, which he is, you know, he's incredibly... I already mentioned that he's bad at just doing, like, house stuff, but he's also, he really does not want to have to do anything for other people that isn't immediately going to get him laid, drunk, or high. And, yeah, obviously, now, and she has a catchphrase. Whenever Charlie says something off offensive that drives her away, drop dead. And it's played by Jennifer Taylor. Taylor. She's beautiful, but you also believe that she's the kind of person that will ask for a certain standard for you to be with her. I forgot to rewrite that even slightly after I just copy pasted that from Mia. Anyway, Herb Melnick. Judith starts a relationship with him, then marries him after divorcing Alan. I'm not going to give away how long passes between those two things happening. Friendly, doofy, somewhat similar to Alan, but with seemingly no neuroses, and unlike Alan, he's an actual doctor. Charlie has an easy and fun time luring him into drinking and the like. Before meeting Charlie, he never drank, and the, the, yeah, let's see. And Herb says a lot of perfectly innocent things that to Charlie and the audience sound very sexual and often explicit. Model train enthusiast, something that gets creepier the further into the show you get. Chipper. Sometimes he and Judith will have a great relationship, sometimes not so great, sometimes their sex is bad, sometimes great. And as with everything else with Judith, usually if things are going well, it's because the other person is accepting Judith, controlling everything. And one example being that a problem between Judith and Herb is Herb's sister, who mocks Judith. And it's played by Ryan Stiles, who I love here on The Drew Carey Show, on Whose Line Is It Anyway. He was even on the... I think he was even on the British version of Whose Line Is It Anyway. And this show uses all of his strengths well. Weird, doofy, deadpan, confident, including when he shouldn't be, sudden bursts of emotion, etc. Linda Freeman. Therapist to several of the major... and main, Oh, I just realized I've been mentioning character names but without saying doctor in front of the name. So I guess I should be saying Dr. Linda Freeman. So, Linda Freeman, yeah, therapist to several and uh, several of the major and main characters, Alan, Charlie, and others will see her about their problems. At first she was introduced as just a child psychiatrist helping Jake, and then they wisely realized how much more fun they can have with the character if they upgraded her to someone who also helps adults. First, she's very deadpan, moves to almost no part of her body other than her face. And even just, and even that very, very little and is used to great effect. And later on, she has stronger reactions, which is especially hilarious because that means that she's affected far more than before, even though back when she was being, back then she was being told extreme things too. She gets frustrated with her patients, especially Charlie, being slow to accept when he obviously is acting a certain way out of pain. She mocks Alan, sometimes also Charlie, played by Jane Lynch, who, yeah, you know, she's great here. What was that? I think she was in that uh, quirky comedy about dog shows. I, I'm afraid I don't remember her and Parker Posey, and they're, just, they're, they're hilarious on that. And yeah, I haven't watched Glee. I probably never will. Just the, 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 the sheer title. I, I believe it's referring to like Glee Club. The, the idea of Glee, I can't... Glee, the, the emotion is just, I, I don't really want to get... Just, it's, it's foreign to me. So... I do occasionally feel it, but it's not so... I, I can't get myself to sit down and watch something that is... Anyway. Let's see. I, it's not that I... You know, I don't... I, I've heard something about that there's like... 
gay characters on the show. That's not something that bothers me. Let's see. Moving on, Bridget Smith, Walden's wife, soon to be ex-wife. She still cares about him, but she doesn't want to be with someone who is as immature as he is. When he tries to get her into, sorry, when he tries to get into her house, first she electrified the fence that he's climbing, but then she does make sure that he's okay, letting him inside the house and only sending him home once she feels like he's okay. Now. I guess I should not. I yeah, I'm not gonna read. I know. And she's played by Judy Greer, who, yeah, she's. I really love her on this, and I love her in other stuff I've seen her in, and I'm not going to get any, go into what. Now, Lindsay McElroy, and she's, she's one of my favorite characters, and I'm really, really glad that she's on, on the show. I, they, they got some really great stuff out of her character. She and Alan are both single parents to incredibly stupid teenage boys, and as such, are pretty desperate, so they start dating. She can be very crude and badly mannered, albeit not to the level of Charlie Harper. She gets drunk on wine very frequently and very clearly has an actual serious drinking problem. She will get incredibly drunk so that she spends hours of the following days doing nothing but throwing up, or throwing up, as she puts it in one episode, in 20 minute intervals. Her and Alan do find that they love each other, at least some of the time, and they have an on again, off again relationship. Since both of them have trouble finding willing partners, and both of them are fairly accepting of the others, you know, there, there are a lot of guys who are gonna be like, I can't with someone who gets so drunk on wine so frequently, but Alan doesn't, you know, yeah. And, yeah, I've already gone through a lot of Alan's flaws. Now, let's see. In a lot of ways, she is the most compelling of Alan's partners. Because she can really be a, what Lindsay Ellis referred to as a vaginated version of himself. Both of them have to respect that their bodies just can't do the things that younger and healthier bodies can. They try to go for long-term long -term emotionally mature relationships, but they will go for casual sex with someone attractive if they can get it. They pretend that they're smarter and more cultured than they actually are, even though they are fairly smart and cultured, which makes it all the more fun to see him screw things up with her. Because he's Alan Harper. He screws things up, especially when it comes to his romantic relationships. Sooner or later, he'll be too honest or show how cheap and kind of narrow-minded he is. It's like seeing him with a younger, less harpy like Judith, except it takes a lot less for her to dump him, at least temporarily, where Judith did stay with him for over a decade, but then they also have a kid together. And part of that is she has such a strong fear of ending, ending up stuck with a loser. But they can be so great together. A lot of the time when they're together... She barely tolerates him and frequently insults him and shows more positive attention to Walden and... Whoops, sorry about that. And when... Sorry. And finally, Alan gets a taste of his own medicine. Everybody else hates being around him, but he doesn't feel the effects of being who he is... Excuse me. The way they do. But when Lindsay behaves that way towards him, he does. Early in the relationship, she seems to really want to be with him, but later on, after she's seen what he is like, she barely accepts being with him. She has to get really drunk on wine to be with him, etc. Mostly on the show, women leave Alan once they see what he's really like, but 
Lindsay finds it easier to be with him than others. She doesn't have a hard, a hard time. She doesn't have a hard time getting with a younger and more attractive man, but with them, she is mo she is worried that the the man the man will, blah, the man will leave uh, if he realizes what she looks like without makeup, and as such, she's just passive aggressive towards him instead of leaving a lot of the time. And it's played by Courtney Thorne Smith. She sells both the trying to be a responsible single parent and the given up trying to impress sexual partners aspects of her character and she's she has a really great horrified face the the, the show in general uses her the the actress's assets quite well she's also quite good at playing drunk and honestly most of the people who play drunk on the show are and I I don't know why, but I did watch some according to Jim, and so I've seen that she can, you know, she's got the horrified face, and she can, you know, really trying to be a responsible parent and such on that show, but yeah. And Eldritch McElroy, Jake's best friend, as stupid as he as he is, and a bad influence, coming up with really bad ideas for things for them to do that Jake agrees to. And he's played by Graham Patrick Martin. He is as stupid as Jake, but he's not just a carbon copy. I think they did a, a good job of making... Uh, yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like they could just have given him Jake's lines or vice versa. Zoe High Tottingham Pierce. Refined British lawyer who gets into a long-term relationship with Walden. She loves that he can fly her to exotic locations with his private jet, but does also very clearly love him as a person. Sophie Winkleman. The British accent is not where it ends. She genuinely is a very cultured person, and so in some ways, an unbearable snob. She really doesn't even attempt to hide just how much she hates Alan. They got off on the wrong foot, but really, with Alan, is there a right foot? She can be very immature with her ex-husband, with whom she has a six-year-old daughter. And Melissa, she's with Alan for a while. She's his trusty receptionist at the chiropractic clinic. They like each other a lot and have great chemistry together. She's one of the few people Alan ever meets that genuinely wants to do things for him that, things that he wants. You know, she wants to make him happy and they do sometimes have problems due to outside influences such as her hippie mother who routinely gets high and might try to sleep with Alan. His cheapness also leads to problems for them. And her catchphrase is yippers. And she's played by Kelly Stables. And let's see. Yeah, and she's somewhat short, which I'm allowed to make fun of because I'm short too. And either has or does for this character a kind of Smurf-like voice ending up with you know, this sort of pixie thing, and they they play off that quite well. There's a, there's an episode where she's at the front door, but she's so short that they can't see her through the, the peephole in, in the door. And her sweetness might lead you to think she doesn't have a temper, when in reality she can actually get incredibly angry with Alan. Now... Billy Stanhope used to work with Walden, and he's introduced telling Walden that he has figured out an idea that they both worked on, but he does need Walden to perfect it, and Walden agrees to do so, but clearly the two of them still despise each other. Billy was hit so hard when the two, first, when the two split the first time that he ended up on crack and recording ranting vlogs for YouTube. And, yeah, he's played by Patton Oswalt, and, yeah, Hilary is here as elsewhere, and just, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not going to list all the things that I've seen him in where he's hilarious, you know, in, yeah, he's, he's hilarious in, in everything I've seen him in. Jenny, and, 
Hmm. I guess. Yeah, this isn't too much. Yeah. Charlie's daughter from an unmarried relationship. Sometimes she can really impart wisdom. She's trying to be an actress, but not very hard. She is shown to be incredibly talented as an actress. Lesbian, hard drinking, very masculine, and played by Amber Tamplin. I've seen her be funny in other stuff and just, yeah, she's, she's great here, she's great elsewhere. I, I did watch some of that show, Joan of Arcadia, I think it was called, where she's also great, you know, she's great, whether it's, whether it's funny stuff or dramatic stuff both on there and in and, and this show. And Brooke, a girl that Jenny really falls for. She does really like Jenny back, and both of them are the type to do one night stands. So now they run into the problem of what to do when they want to go beyond the one night stand. Hard drinking, lazy, smokes pot like Jenny. And Larry. Lindsay falls for him, but is not completely happy with him. So, I guess, yeah, I, I'm not gonna, yeah. At first he's just naive, but it doesn't take the show very long to make him unbelievably stupid. One of the single stupidest characters on the show and in fiction in general, I, it's, it's incredible just how stupid yeah he probably i think he might be stupider than jake honestly i hadn't really thought about it but he might be he might be the stupidest character i've, I've seen on any show ever yeah and it's unbelievably funny i'm really glad that at first i wasn't sure he was going to be more than just a couple of episodes but he's he's in more than a couple of episodes that's all i'm going to say Barry, the character's joke that he could pass for any age between 12 and 60. Likely he's, excuse me, around 18. He idolizes Walden and, excuse me, and the two work together really well. He doesn't have boundaries and he has serious daddy issues, part of why he idolizes Walden. It's clear that he has stalked girls that he likes. Sometimes actors who appear as guests will later show up on the show as completely different characters who may be much more featured characters. And I'm really glad that they didn't consider an actor off limits for use for a different character. Some of the best characters are played by previous guest actors. Candy, Chelsea. Before playing Chelsea, Jennifer Taylor played, let's see, three different it's it says four different but I'm pretty I I looked at the list I could only see three but all of them were in, of interest to Charlie in their respective episodes Bridget Kate yeah the I'm not gonna go into detail about Kate here because I don't want to spoil that let's yeah I'm I'm going to try to keep it to half a minute before I'm back. Yeah, that was definitely less than half a minute. Okay, moving on to On characters. Like Married with Children before before it, the basic philosophy, albeit it is a number of times challenged and or otherwise not adhered to, is that no matter what, things suck and they always will. With this show, it's especially if you try to be a good person. No good deed goes unpunished, debauchery pays off, with major exceptions. And other than that, none of the characters are happy, nor do they appear at all to truly, at all capable of truly being happy. Some, something will always get in the way, inherent to every character of the show. And 
Let's see. And thus its entire world view fundamentally yeah, there are fun fundamental flaws that ensure they will never be happy, with some notable exceptions. For example, a lot of times, and a lot of the time, Charlie's carefree existence is shown as having no negative consequences at all, including health-wise, in spite of him drinking and smoking constantly. But then there are other episodes where they... Yeah, it's... It's not quite consistent on that. Now, an episode will have at least one conflict for at least one major character based on the way they live their life and their personality. Charlie will try to live his hedonistic life, but will run into problems such as a woman. Let's see. Let's see. What's that say? Hmm. Yeah, never mind. That I really should have proofread that. Alan will try to raise Jake, whose laziness, stupidity, and the negative... Oh, hold on one second. Is that... No, never mind. Whose laziness, stupidity, and the negative influence of Charlie's life make that much harder, or he'll try to get through regular life experiences frustrated with how often they go wrong for him, despite, or sometimes due to, his neurotic need to control everything around him. Other people getting by without putting in as much work as he does. Other people not sharing his view on how controlled things in life should be, etc. Let me just check. Yeah. Charlie and Alan do both seem to somewhat believe in God, will invoke him at times, not necessarily pray, but seem to fear a sort of Old Testament kind of wrath from him. You know, in one episode, Alan says to God, sorry about the curse God stuff, but we both know not your best work. Even when by himself, Charlie will sometimes say, I swear to God, as if he does believe that God hears him, even if he doesn't really think that God will believe him. I think he does pray at least once, actually, now that I think about it. He describes his depraved lifestyle as what God, in his infinite wisdom, created me to do. He will describe something good as God's blessing, something bad as against God's will, etc. Something Alan fears, and Charlie will sometimes acknowledge is true. In Alan's words to Charlie, when you get laid, I get screwed. Charlie will sleep with someone close to himself, to Alan, to Jake, and the consequence hit Alan, whilst Charlie usually avoids them. Jake will try to enjoy his childhood, try to avoid doing schoolwork, while his parents will insist that he do it. Now, for the less focused on leads, Judith will try to find some relief for all the repression, for, for too long suppressed frustration that she lives with only for Charlie to kneecap her attempt, often just for fun, Alan to fail in some way, Jake being lazy, a non-regular on the show not delivering what was on what was expected, etc. Rose will try to get closer to Charlie, sometimes by improving her relationship to, say, his brother, only for it to fail when she unwittingly crosses a boundary, when someone keeps her from being alone with Charlie, when she's caught doing something Let's see. When she's caught doing what she's doing to get closer to Charlie, etc. Evelyn will try to show off how well she's doing, live her hedonistic life, be treated to some love or affection from her family, friends, peers, only for it to go wrong because her family resists, often with good cause. She accidentally reveals what she's trying to do, etc. Berta will try to do her cleaning, keep her family or other members of her social circle from making huge mistakes that will affect the rest of their lives get just a tiny bit of spare time that she can use resting from the massive amount of work she has to do, only for it to fail due to the problems of Charlie, Alan, Jake, and the rest of the Harper family, the terrible decision-making skills of her family and other members of her social circles, and the general unfair situation that she is 
that is the reality for countless Americans who can't get a well-paying job that doesn't push them to the very edge of what they can do without ke keeling over. Candy will have a problem with a basic thing because she understands so little of how to get by. In one episode she has serious problems with pain in her teeth, not thinking on her own that maybe she should see a dentist, and accidentally makes things much worse because she suddenly sees a shiny thing that she really wants even though neither her nor Alan can afford it. Chelsea will try to influence Charlie in a positive way and he'll resist, trying desperately to hold, hang on to the hedonistic, excuse me, hedonistic life that he's gotten so used to. Walden Schmidt will try to solve a problem he's having with his current significant other, with his business, with the Harper family, especially with the stupid Jake and cheap Alan, and face problems because of his own emotional immaturity. Herb Melnick will be tricked into drinking or other quote-unquote bad behavior by Charlie, or he will stare at a woman he isn't with, getting into trouble with Judith. Linda Freeman, a time she genuinely throws herself into trying to solve the problems of her patients. Other times she's clearly given up, and at times clearly does not want to be with the patient. And yeah, as I've already mentioned, the patients themselves make it impossible for her to, yeah, it just, it can't go well. Is that a thing that could help? Now that I think about it, you know what, give me, yeah, at least 30 seconds and maybe like, yeah, probably want to like, tell you what, Mute until you see my face again. Okay, that wasn't as loud as I feared, but it also doesn't look like it helped any. Tried to adjust my lighting, but yeah. I do not know what I'm going to do next week to avoid my bad back affecting. Let me just run it. Yeah, yeah, that should be fine. So, Bridget Schmidt, against her better judgment, she will give Ash, sorry, Walden another chance, only to be humiliated when he makes a fool of himself in public, such as when he gets into a food fight with an eight-year-old girl when he was trying to prove to Bridget that he had grown up emotionally. Lindsay McElroy. Alan causes a lot of problems for her. She goes back and forth between wanting him and how much she wants to do with him. He, grews, he screws things up for her and her drinking also gets her in trouble. Eldritch McElroy. His ideas are incredibly stupid, but he has a lot of energy to put into them. And often he'll drag Jake down with him. Zoe Hyde, Tottingham Pierce, her ex is vindictive, she's not very good at hiding when she doesn't think much of someone. This includes Alan, who of course everyone hates, can also cause problems between her and Lindsay. She has more of an education than Lindsay does and is happy to lure that over Lindsay. Melissa, she keeps expecting Alan to spend money on her and show her a good time, and she keeps running her head into the wall as he refuses to. Billy Stanhope, his resentment towards Walden will every so often get him to say or do something that Walden hates, and Walden may retaliate. Jenny, her refusal to become more mature causes problems. Brooke, her laziness and pot smoking cause problems. Larry, his kind nature combined, combined with his infinite stupidity cause problems. Now... Some seasons don't have very much continuity, but others do have continuity with the relationships Charlie and Alan and Evelyn, Judith, Rose with male partners have with certain female partners of theirs. <clears throat> Excuse me. A relationship will start in one episode, later episodes will have the relationship going through a hard time. Then even later in the season they'll either break up, make up or break up, and then that female partner may come back later. Those are some of the best stories and characters. They do great with one-off dates, hookups and such as well, and clearly they had a lot of different ideas for scenarios and jokes to do with those, but the, yeah, the, the ongoing relationships are, are 
many times some of the best. Hmm. Could I? That's probably... It's worth a shot. Again, 30 seconds, maybe mute until you see my face again. Yeah, see, that was the thing I was worried about. It doesn't actually get any light on my face, which is what... Yeah, so... 30 seconds and maybe mute until you see my face again. I'll try to improve the lighting before next time, but this it's very likely that I'll have to use this instead of the other. Yeah. Now, let's see. In a lot of episodes from the later seasons, the writers do a really good job of building on the things that have happened. Jokes will work and have an impact because of the history between characters. The show has earned these jokes and really delivers on them. Now, the relationships between the major characters, especially the regular, grow over the course of the show. Sometimes it makes them better, sometimes worse. If you see a woman appear on the show, even if she is famous, even if she isn't conventionally attractive, in at least one of her episodes she will likely be sexualized or the like. Sometimes Charlie will win, sometimes lose, sometimes Alan will win. They don't put a lot of episodes where a specific character will win in a row. You know, I ended up not being very careful about knowing that, but I don't think they, yeah. It doesn't get to be one note. Every major character eventually gets frustrated with everyone else if they spend enough time around them. Every major character might work with other major characters that they are otherwise seem to really dislike. On the right circumstances, which can lead to some hilarious odd couple matchups. And let's see. I guess, hmm, no, I don't, I don't think I'm going to give away any of these, just in case. Let's see. The girls that Walden falls for and that fall for him. Yes, I think I phrased that right. Do feel like they are a sweet couple together. Great chemistry between Ashton Kutcher and the the female actors. I, I really, I'm really glad that they did that because they, yeah, he's, he wants to make the girl in his life happy and they manage to ma still make it have an edge and be funny but I, th I do think that if the show had never gotten Walden I think it might have gotten too bitter you know the, the last couple of seasons of Married with Children are very bitter very very misogynist and yeah it is kind of if, if you I mean I I, I don't think I would say that there's any season of this show that isn't misogynist, but there are different levels of how misogynist it is. Now, let me see. I guess that's another thing I wrote more than once. Okay, if they like a certain actor's performance in a one-off role, they might bring that actor back, and it may or may not be the same character. Yeah, I mean, it's that's not the exact same thing, so... I guess I'm not sure that these, let's see, yeah, I'm going to leave these, I was going to put quotes in here, 
ultimately, you know, if you want, they're, they're I just copied them in from IMDb. So, and we reach the, yeah, this might be the last, yeah, okay, so, that is the section, episode rewatch list. There we go. I have to say, I found it almost impossible. Not, you know, beyond very difficult, just almost impossible to select only two episodes from every single season. But, you know, there wasn't a single season where I just sat down and I was like, oh, I don't, you know, those two definitely stand above the rest. You know, the, the, yeah. The way, you know, the way I, I try to do, you know, let's see. Yeah, the, basically, the, the way I tried to do it was to gradually eliminate from the list, you know, the, the ones where I'm like, well, I mean, I guess that one has a scene that isn't as funny. You know, it's not it's not the very best one, but the the let's see. No, sorry, never mind. That was what I at first meant to, but I ended up not feeling like there was any episode that wasn't as funny as the very best. And ultimately, I had to just go with stuff like holiday specials, wedding or funeral episodes, season openers, season finales, and such. But it really, it was, it was very, very difficult. I, it's probably a good thing that they didn't put way too many, like, holiday specials. In a, I, I would not have been able to, to choose, yeah. Now, and again, you know, this is, I spent, you know, te technically not quite 12, not 12 entire months, but 12 three-week periods you know I, I watched yeah so so I've been watching this show you know yeah tw 12 three week periods and then a 13th 12 yeah 21 day period watching this show you know it's the last time I didn't watch a single episode of the show was that long ago and then you know yeah I watch one episode per day Every three weeks, I'd be done with the season. I'd record, you know, it used to be my favorite jokes of that season. It ended up being every single joke because there weren't any where I was like, I don't really want to quote that joke. So, yeah. Um, and um, let's see. Which is why the longest video I did is not on the longest season that there is. So, yeah. The, the anyway. <sighs> So, yeah, the, the, um, let me think. Right, so, so, yeah. I was determined to not watch more than two episodes per season. And I was determined to not let there be more, you know, I didn't want one entire day. Oh, you know what? Actually, sorry. There have been some days where I just ran out of time to watch. And then I just watched two episodes the day before or after. Anyway, other than that, the, you know, basically, there hasn't been two days in a row. I don't, yeah, never mind. I've watched almost every single day for, for all that time. And I was determined to only two episodes per season because otherwise, it would just be, be way, way too many, but it was incredibly difficult to, to limit it to just that. Now, yes, rewatching, I confirmed what I expected. Even rewatching the earliest episodes. Granted, you know, these were specific choices. They weren't just randomly picked from, you know, and only two per season, but I laughed my ass off even at those. Even at the. the let's see. Yeah. 
even though I had so recently, you know, I watched the, the show's finale, meaning season 12 finale, the same day as I watched an episode from the first season, and I laughed incredibly hard at both. You know, yeah, watched episodes that went much further and also got me laughing hard, you know, so yeah. And again, none of these titles are actual spoilers because you're not going to be able to guess quite what, so yeah. Excuse me. These are the, the episodes that I rewatched, and I guess I am not going to list what, episode, what season or what number episode. I'm just going to read aloud the titles. Merry Thanksgiving. An old flame with a new wick. I always wanted a shaved monkey. Squab, 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 squab. We can bank on the two Olympic gymnasts. Hi, Mr. Horned One. Walnuts and Demerol. And Myra doesn't pee a lot. A little clammy and none too fresh. Winky dink time. I'd like to start with the cat. Baseball is better with steroids. Warning, it's dirty. Gumby with a pokey. Springtime on a stick. Chocolate diddlers or my puppy's dead. Frodo's headshots. Sips, sonnets, and sodomy. Four balls, two bats, one mitt. Run, Stephen Saban, run. And yeah, this one, I'm. This is arguably racist, so I'm not gonna read it. I'm just gonna. Yeah. Number one, accident lawyer. On vodka, on soda, on blender, on mixer. Family, buble, deep fried turkey. And then for this last one, I was intending, you know, again, it's been three weeks since I watched all of season 12. And at the time, I tried to limit it to just two episodes. And I, I kept saying... I'll make sure to make the final decision between, you know, before, obviously, before I sit down and watch just one episode, but for the longest time, I only, I guess I made the final decision, yeah, earlier today, just maybe, maybe an hour before I actually watched the episode, right up until then, I had not decided between the first or the second of the following, but it's the second, I'm just going to Boompa loved his hookers. Of course he's dead. And with that, I am at the end of my notes. And yeah, so I I love the show. It's definitely my favorite sitcom. My favorite comedy show in general. Not my favorite TV show in general, just you know. But it's yeah. I I I remain in awe of their ability to keep it fresh for as long. I'll, I'll admit that a couple of the things they came up with over the seasons, you know, when I when I think back to it, it's like, oh yeah, they didn't, that didn't stick around, and it's like, yeah, that my it was maybe a good idea that they didn't, that they only used that a few times and then just stopped, but it just wasn't, yeah, the the. I, th I think that it it had an appropriate length, you know. The, I I don't I still don't feel that it ever just lost lost the the lost its mojo or that it really got, you know. Yeah, it was just it it. I never s stopped loving the show, and it has an amazing start an amazing finish i will acknowledge that that is something if you're going to watch the show if you haven't watched it there are people who hate the finale and i guess i can kind of see what they mean but i i mean do you, do you have you ever had the thing where you're like reading someone else's criticism of a movie or a tv show and everything that they mention as criticisms you're you agree with that, okay, yeah, that's that's definitely in there, but it's like, 
Yeah, but that's a good thing, though. Why are you saying that's a bad thing? And it's, again, it's fine. They have a right to their opinion. I would never say that someone can't have their own opinion on a thing. And, or that they should, you know... Well, okay, there are some opinions you should feel bad for, I guess. You know, but, but the... Yeah. The, the, yeah. It started great. It ended great. It was great throughout its run. I'm really, really glad that they... That it didn't just get cancelled, that they actually got to make. Because the, the final episode, again, that was... Yeah, I, I rewatched the, the series finale before I... So, so, yeah, three hours ago, before I started recording. And, yeah, keep in mind, I've now watched that episode twice in three weeks. And it was still, like, I was constantly laughing my ass off. I'd actually, I had forgotten just how good it was. I was thinking back and I was like, ah, oh, that goes on for a while. And then I watched the show. No, that didn't go on for a while at all. Yeah, just... And it's, it's a, uh, it's a... Uh... Yeah, that's not a spoiler. It's the length of two episodes. It's almost 40 minutes of just sitcom. There are a lot of sitcoms that cannot withstand that liberal scrutiny, you watching that much at a time. Yeah, I, I, I am amazed at this show and I'm really glad that it never got like ruined. You know, I, I shudder to think like, you know, I love Alias, but it's definitely a show that got really meddled with by, by the not the studio, but the network, you know, and I shudder to think what would have happened with this show if there had been that level of meddling, you know, yeah, anyway, I, yeah, the, the, I guess I don't really have any anything more that I want to make sure to say. See, I'm by, I'm trying to buy myself more time. See if I think of something at the end. You know, at, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a show where people indulge in incredibly unacceptable behavior and the audience, you know, we're, we're we can we can laugh at them doing these awful awful things because we don't feel the consequences and because we don't you know hopefully most viewers don't actually do these things and it's just yeah and and at the same time you know it does there are definitely things on the show that you know so, some of the things some of these things, it's stuff that, well, you know, a lot of people aren't comfortable with that, but really it should be okay. And then there are things where, like, okay, that is not okay under any circumstance. You know, the, the, yeah. And I guess that is the very, yes. So, I am really going to miss talking about this show, but... Here we are. The, huh, the lighting isn't bad at that, I guess. Yeah, it is just, anyway. Am I comfortable sitting like that? I'm not sure. If, I'm thinking for an entire video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.